Um, I first off wanted to say thank you so much for having me come here. For me, um, being back in Houston with Yao, it, this is a great opportunity because I've been connected to this individual for so long, since the year 2002, but we've never gotten a chance to really sit down and talk. We've had the same agent for a long time, but, and I've heard so many great stories about Yao, but we haven't had a chance to really sit down and just converse. So uh, hopefully for you guys, you guys get a chance to get to know Yao a little bit more and some of the things that he's really into. So yeah, I guess Yao, the first thing, I'll, first question I have for you is that, how does it, how does it feel to be back here in Houston? I mean, I know that your family is here and you come back, but to be back during All-Star Weekend. You know, um, since my uh, second season in Houston, I already feel that uh, my uh, Shanghai or Houston is almost almost like a, my two uh, condo in the, in the same city. You know, you just pack your luggage, go into another one, live for a weekend or something, and then you're back on and back forward like that. So, um, you know, Houston for me is I um, I was talked to Charles before um, just a, a minute ago about. Uh, while we're living in Houston for, for the season, for the basketball season, I was missing Shanghai, but during this period of time I was living in, um, uh, in Shanghai, I was missing Houston all the time. It, it is very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you, um, you know, for me it was funny, growing up, <clears throat> I was never really into basketball. Basketball just kind of happened for me. How, how did you get into basketball? How did you? Oh. Yeah, obviously I have a tall parents. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, both of my parents played basketball before, <coughs> back to the 1970s. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, people expecting I'm going tall yeah. and play basketball since like uh, it's obviously Korea. I'm going to choose it. Yeah, it is. Um, but my parents never uh, forced me to uh -huh. play basketball. <coughs> Excuse me. Because they, they always thinking, you know, education is first. Education is first. Sports is part of education. It can help us to learn something you cannot directly learn from a book, like uh, such as teamwork, communicate, leadership, help each other, friendship. Such, uh, so, uh, no, you can you can list down a you can list out a long list. Anyway, so um, I was joining a. Uh, a a junior basketball team at a very young age, nine years old, I um, play for fun. And I'll obviously that also keep me away from those troubles <laughs> a little bit. Um, yeah, that's how I started. And speaking of education, you're, you're going back to one of the best universities in Shanghai, right? You're getting your yeah. finance degree. Yeah, 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 that's, that's true. You know, I, I believe you get a degree before the <laughs> walking through the yeah. NBA, but I did the opposite. <laughs> well, you had a longer NBA career, so <laughs> it was good. And the finance degree will work out in your favor. Uh, take me to draft night. I, I remember, for me, um, it, it was such a surreal moment because I, I never thought I would be drafted. And it, it's funny, you know, Charles, you made the uh, joke that, you know, Yao went first and he was deserving of going first. But for me, watching it, seeing this guy from China that you heard so much about, but you never got a chance to see, <clears throat> it, was, it was an amazing moment because uh, you were blazing a path. Um, Talk about blazing a path from where you came from. I mean, blazing. Well, just like, um, like you know, getting drafted and your draft night, you weren't actually in New York. You were back home, correct? Yeah. Um, you know, this, um, obviously for for the athlete, you know, you can be in the Madison Square for the draft night. That's a, maybe that's a huge thing. It's a huge thing for everyone to start this career. And you, your name will be announced by uh, Mr. Dale Stan, yep. the commissioner, or the vice commissioner on the second round. Uh, you, you will be, you know, very delight for walking on the podium, you know, had a hat put on your head. But uh, for me, as uh, as, uh, as a kid so raised up, you know, grew up in China, we don't have that uh, that feeling. We don't have that feeling. We know that the NBA is one of a dream, one of a dream, but not our only goal right there. When we growing up, I played for national team, played in the Olympics. That was the priority. That's the, you know, that is almost the same as here to play in the NBA. So I, we know the NBA is a collect most talented, most powerful player in this world, into this league. 
but uh, this is like a, a culture different. You know, when you grow up in, in, in that kind of a situation, you don't realize, um, you don't realize that, uh, you know, the, how important the Madison Square uh, is, how that means for you. Well, we were talking there at the table. For me growing up, it was always my dream to play in the <coughs> NBA. But you said for you, it wasn't always your dream to play in the mm -hmm. NBA, right? Yeah. Well, what was your dream as a kid? Well, my dream as a kid is, uh, you have to, you know, think back a little bit. When I said, I'm born in 1980. And uh, when in 1980, everybody know that China is just, uh, you know, ending, not long ending after the Cultural Revolution. And the people, uh, the leaders, and tell the people living in China, I was thinking about uh, you know, how can we improve our life, how to, you know, you know uh, build a better country, and such as things. So we all dream you know, as a little, besides a basketball player is become a scientist or artist or something else can help to create a better country. That's our dream right there. Sports is kind of a, mm, the way that you can gain honor for your family, for your uh, country, but um, we didn't never imagine that uh, you can sign a million dollar contract. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's so interesting because it, you guys had such a, you had such a different upbringing um, for, for you, when you did get drafted and you did come to Houston and you played, um, how was that first year? Was it, was it very hard to adjust to the culture of, of teammates? Because I'm sure it had to be, for me, my, my rookie year was so different from where I came from. Some guys in the team didn't care. Mm -hmm. Some guys in the team were just about their money. You come from this, you know, you're playing on a national team. How different was it? Um... Well, we have some experience uh, while playing the CBA, the Chinese Basketball Association, because we have foreigner player, American player coming to play in this league. So we have a little bit experience, but still when you join the NBA and sit in a locker room with four of uh, American or international player, that would be a totally different experience for me. I remember my first day running to a locker room, <laughs> Catino Mobley, you remember? Yes. Um, he used to be a play for Rockets. He, he run into me. Hey, hey Yao, uh, I, I want, I would like uh, you uh, to my home. Uh, have dinner with my mom, mom cooking. Soul food, soul food. He said. I said, what does soul food mean? Uh, I heard that's soul. They're like, uh, I don't like salty food. <laughs> See, that's kind of a, a, coach, a culture uh, a difference between, uh, between us. But, uh, you know, basketball is such a, a, a media between us. We can, we can communicate through that. Some, some of the pseudos plays, play calls, or the body language, we can each other. And otherwise, you probably remember I have a turbo named Colin Pine. He's been help us, help me uh, for several years. It really helps. Speed-wise, and I mean, obviously, you had the height and the length and a lot of people, but was the speed something that was different for you to adjust to with some of the athleticism of the guys? Yeah, of course. Um, that's, I think, um, that is the most uh, different compared to what I play in China. You know, when you have a big guy in China, like my size, a little bit under, a, li under, uh, a little bit shorter than me. Uh, a little bit, as in 7'4"? Kind of clarify. Okay. <laughs> okay. Whatever. <laughs> the entire team will slow down yeah. to, to wait for you. So when you get into the half court, everybody ever sit down and call play, that'll probably only have 15 seconds left. Mm. And here, if you want to play, you catch the small first. You have to catch the, the speed of the small so uh, you can play a basketball game. It's totally opposite. I want, I want to bring it back to <clears throat> home for you. Um, I remember draft night, watching you get drafted mm -hmm. and watching the video and uh, hearing my mother, who is very astute into different details of life, and she, I remember her saying, that must be so much pressure for him to feel like he has this, this whole entity, this whole, all, all these people that just count on him to be the savior. Um, did you ever feel that weight as a kid when you first got drafted? I... Um 
I feel the weight. Uh, I can't say I feel excited because I feel the pressure. Uh, Bill and me went through all the entire, uh, and Lu Hao also, uh, went through the entire uh, pre-draft you know, negotiating with the CBA and the Shanghai Sharks. Um, there's a pretty uh, suffering in there. You, know, you have negotiated a lot of uh, the contract problems. So until the draft land, actually, we are all disasters. No, but we're just glad, uh, glad that we can be finish this. And uh, it's almost like you finish a, a two-mile or three-mile running and you have the last expand into there. You just feel, oh, I need that first fresh air into my lung, that kind of feeling. feeling. Uh, obviously, you know, we know the pressure comes. We, when we into the next level, when you first day join the Chicago Bulls, when you first day join the uh, Duke uh, Blue Devils, you will feel that pressure because those, those teams, uh, uh, those teams' names carry a very... Uh, rich of history uh, of there. I know uh, Blue Devil, they have an uh, honoring room right there. Every, every young player, when you, or every uh, junior, uh, I'm sorry, senior, yeah. se senior would take the, the, the first freshman player yep. into there to introduce the, the history of the team, something like that. Uh, I think that's kind of a culture's uh, stuff. And, and when I drafted by Rockets, I can tell you this, um, you believe it or not, when the first time NBA lived, in China in 1994, and that was, you know, obviously that's a wonderful moment for most of us in here. I was Houston Rockets compete against the New York Knicks in the final, and uh, <clears throat> that was the first time I watched NBA game. And I, obviously, I don't know which team I should be rooting for, um, <laughs> so I should be supporting for, or whatever. I just randomly pick one because, you know, when I'm 14 years old, you know, that kind of age, kids are very how to say that? It's when you say yes, he won't say no. That kind of hey, you're just in between. You don't know. Yeah. yeah. So all my teammates, for some reason, maybe because New York, they supporting New York Knicks. So I said, okay, I'm going. Obviously, I'm going to support the Houston Rockets. <laughs> it was a sign. Yeah, maybe that's a sign. So when I'm drafted by the Rockets, I I do have feel that feel something like that. I feel that's like almost like my destiny. Mm. You know, I I felt a little bit of pressure, but I, I couldn't. It's funny, one of my really good friends is a guy, and he's a big fan of yours, and i got to get you guys together. Uh, a guy named Scooter Brown, he represents Justin Bieber. And Justin's only about, I don't know, 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, and he's like, I wish I could be as tall as Yao Ming. Right? But I watch Justin, and Justin can't walk around anywhere. He can't walk outside. Everybody's always asking him for an autograph or asking him about a concert. H how did you deal with that initially? Because you know, anywhere you go, you're 7'6". You know, people are going to recognize you. How do you handle that? Uh, try to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, in Chinese world, we have the word say, um, some, maybe Lily, you can help me translate it. How to translate it? Let's. Yeah. Well, once you're here, you will adapt. Yeah, I can't. Basically, is is I, I can't change how the, this world look at me or feeling about me. So what I can do is try to fit in there and accept it. Mm. Well, if, what you can do is change yourself to fit in this community or this world. Um, and the other side <coughs> is uh, well, it. Is those fans are so supporting us, um, and there's no reason that we would give them a no. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they were particularly for those kids, right? And uh, obviously, if there's a hundred people sworn, that's another situation we have to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember my rookie year. I uh, I missed two free throws to win a game against Milwaukee, <coughs> and. Um, just all the media started to come down on me. And it was the first moment. I mean, I had media on me when I was at school and college, but it was the first moment where I, I felt that weight. Was there a, was there a moment um, your first year or your, your time throughout the NBA where you just said, God, I, I don't know if I can take all this. You know, I, I don't know if I can handle everything that's being thrown at me from the fans, from your government, from the team, I mean, from all these other factors. Mm. Not my first year, but my second year. Why wow, your second year? Uh, I think, uh, first of all, you, you play for uh, Chicago, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a slightly chance that New York Knicks have a chance to pick me. But I have to say that I'm, I'm glad I didn't <laughs> go to both cities because uh, 
you see the Jeremy Lin last year. The, the, the media pressure is huge in both cities. But in Houston, I would say people are very, very friendly. Now, I have to you know, appreciate that. Uh, the medias, the fans, you know, they don't much point a finger to me. They give me time to growing, to growing up as a, as a player, as a person. Um, and I was, uh, under that situation, I didn't feel much of a pressure from, from here. Um, and also, I think uh, people understand I'm from a different country. Um, I have a language problem at the beginning, and uh, I don't, didn't really fit in this sports culture in, in the NBA. And people more, have more patience to me. And I think the patience is the word I learned from, from here, from school. And because what we do in the future is rely on that. We were talking at the table about <clears throat> speaking of patience. How much has it, has it changed um, government-wise um, for certain players? Like, you know, you weren't here for the draft. Um, how much has the government changed from the time that you came in to where we are right now? Um, yeah, that's a very good example. I, I, I missed the uh, draft, uh, and uh, I missed the summer camp and the, the pre, uh, preceding the training camp. Um, I almost like directly into the regular season. And the player before me, Wang Juju, who played for Mavericks and the other several teams before, he, he didn't get, uh, he, uh, he got drafted in 1999 and he won't play his first season until 2001, just one year before me. And, and until me, I, I, at least I can play the same year. And then into 2007, Yi Jianlian, the, uh, the last uh, Chinese player come out uh, out of China, in here, um, he he got a draft. He be there. He the first Chinese play, player be there, and he didn't miss the summer camp. He didn't, and he uh, reported to the team for the uh, pre uh, preseason uh, training camp and the regular season. See that that's in, that's all happened in eight years, and you see that uh, how the uh, sports uh, bureau. That's what we call the. The, the government who are running the sports area, sports bureau improvement on that, those process. They let players slowly come, come out, not only in, on the basketball area. You can see Lina on the tennis, that's another athlete. And, the, uh, and, uh, and Liu Xiang, uh, the, the, the tracker run, runner. Um, and how we, deal with the, the, how we deal with those situations is already improved. And I believe that in the future that will be, um, that will be more flexible. If there is one thing that you could change about when you came out, um, whatever the government could have done, what would you have changed? What I can done? Yeah. If I was that sports bureau? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Putting you in the position of power. Uh, power is a phrase thing. You know, when you have control of power, it's really, you know, it's not about how you control the power, it's about how you control yourself. You know? Is how you control yourself. I don't know. I'm, I'm afraid about power sometimes, you know, um, because the power is sometimes is giving you a way that you can control other people's as life, other people's uh, destiny. Uh, you have to learn such a thing, learn enough to have to have such a, a level of power. But I would say, if I do have that power, well. You know what? I probably won't change anything. I probably won't change anything because, um, because at that moment, the entire Chinese sports it will not understand, will not understand what has happened there, what happened that moment, and it will not learn until we make some mistake. And people are taking more lesson from those mistakes. I believe that, and uh, obviously, hopefully, not too big mistakes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we, you know, we've all made mistakes. How, how are you different now in your 30s than you were from your 20s? We were talking about <coughs> how, yeah. you know, not that we think we're like old and wise or anything, but um, <laughs> you, 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 you have a tendency that you live a lot within that lifespan of playing in the NBA and living through <coughs> some of the experiences we have. I think 30 is a very interesting um, edge. You, um, you have some experience from the past, and you have still have enough energy 
and passion to do things. I'm not saying you, you still have a passion. <laughs> you still have a lot of passion. <laughs> but it's, it's a very, and I said it's a very, it's a very unique time in there. Right? There's a lot of my friends, including you, are, we are around 30. I think we, we are so thirsty to, to learn more things with our, we are currently experience and knowledge and currently a passion. Because we know there's a, in the future there is a more things waiting for us. So Yao Ming, first pick in NBA draft, have a great NBA career. How is, how is your injury? How, how did you handle that? Um, back to that point again. You know, you, I can't change that. I have to accept it. And uh, sometimes I look at uh, other person that I'm thinking I'm a, already a fortune guy. Um, so I, um, looking positive, looking positive. You know, um, um, when there's a door shut, there's always a window open. I don't know if this is a word from here or from China, but I believe that. From here? Okay. I've been here, I've, here, oh yeah, too, I've been here too long, so I already... <laughs> Well, you talk about, you know, a door opens to me. You have a beautiful wife. You have an amazing daughter. Um, what's on the horizon for Yao Ming now? What, what's the plan? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? Well, my plan, mm -hmm. you know, since my daughter born, thanks to Dr. Peaks, you know, deliver my beautiful daughter. But there's a round of applause. And that's also, also thanks to you because I take my back seat in my family after that. <laughs> So your wife really runs the show? Uh, you know, wives run the house. Yeah, <laughs> smart man. <laughs> so what's new? Like, what do you, what do you want to do? Like, do you have? You're, are you doing stuff philanthropically or I mean, with charities? Obviously, working here with the Asian Society. Yeah, I, was, I, I seen. You know, a couple of days ago, I I I come to this place uh, uh, to do an interview. That was the first time I come here after this building finished. I wasn't here for this building's uh, groundbreaking. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing to see this, how beautiful it is. So there must be a lot of people's effort of putting there to build this, to run this, to contain this. Um, I said another day, this will be a legacy for, for, this, for this city. And I'm so proud for you know, everyone here or who, the people who didn't, didn't attempt here, but, you know, whoever supported this, support this building. Um, other thing, otherwise, you know, um, I'm, I'm still running my uh, foundation. Uh, started a couple years ago. Uh, we are focused on building a uh, school in China, uh, particularly in, in the western China, the, you know, not that developing uh, area. Uh, so far, we had 14 schools finished. Uh -huh. Congratulations. That's thank great. you. Thank you. And we realized that building a school is not the only, uh, the, not the only thing we can do. We also created, that's by Lu Hao's idea, um, we created a called Yao Foundation Charity, uh, Yao Foundation Basketball Season, I'm sorry. We recruited over 50 uh, volunteers uh, from a, what is the school's name? From Leshan Sichuan Pharmacy. It's a, I guess it's just a school who is especially training the guy who's going to become a teacher. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of school. Shi Fan Huh? Normal. Normal. University, thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, we recruit about 50 um, uh, students from their school uh, to spread them out to the different, uh, different school who uh, are interested about this project, to teach those kids play basketball, to organize a game, um, basically try to uh, try teach them something, the activity after school time. Uh, if maybe that surprised you, but uh, not all the Chinese people know basketball game and me, mm. because some of some of the villages don't have a cable, don't have a TV, so there's no way they can watch a basketball game on there. So there's last thing we still can do. Um, and after that, we were, at late August, we were traveling, traveling some of the almost 400 kids, 400 kids to uh, Leshan, the, the city located at uh, Sichuan Pharmacy. Uh, hosting a, a camp there for 10 days, you know, provide them a lot of uh, a training. We invited some uh, profession, Chinese professional player into there as a, as a coach, uh, teach them play basketball and play a game. Uh, Karon Butler was there, 
uh, supporting us. You know, we, we had organized an all-star game for those kids. It was very interesting. You know, everybody had fun and uh, walked back with the trophy. So, so I have one, more, one last question for you, and then I'm going to open it up to Q&A. <coughs> In 50 years from now, if there's a kid right now. My dad already. Yep. <laughs> What, what would you want somebody, when, they, when the name Yao Ming comes up, what would you want somebody to think? Um, well, handsome, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's the start. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I hope uh, they, they can uh, remember me as, uh, as a good person. Yeah, as a good person. Uh, there's something. There's something that uh, can help, uh, you know, our both home, Shanghai, and I mean, China and uh, United States can can link each other. Thank you. Thank you. So, I, I think two people on each side. They have microphones. So, if you guys have any questions that you would like to ask Yao, just raise your hand, and they will bring you the microphone. Jay uh, mentioned draft night, and you get selected by the Houston Rockets. I'd just be curious, what were your perceptions of Houston? I assume you'd never visited here, but, but you get drafted by the Rockets. All of a sudden, you're heading to Houston. What were your perceptions of what the city was going to be like, and how did that live up to what it was really like? Well, obviously, the, uh, the first thing I know about Houston is that movie, you know, Apollo 13. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we know uh, Houston is an uh, astronaut. We call uh, Houston is an astronaut uh, city. I'm so sad that we don't name that, but uh, astronaut is, uh, is a baseball team here. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's the first, my uh, first vision about Houston. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a city with, uh, with a full of scientists, you know, must be the most brightest people there. Um, can, can launch people into the moon. Yeah, this is partially a question and partially an attempt to place a seed in your mind along with my friend Ping Sun. I'm a rice owl, and we would like to compete with the Blue Devils. Compete with? Complete, compete in basketball with the Blue Devils. Yeah, with Duke, I guess, with the school I went to. Okay. So my question is, what is the process for uh, the uh, Chinese national to come to the United States and play college basketball? You know, what, what, be, what a game would looks like? I mean, what a level compared? I think he's, I think he's asking, how, how would, would it be possible for a young kid from China to come and play college basketball for... Yeah. Duke okay. Or North Carolina. Yeah, thank you. There are, I know, as I know, there's a couple kids from China is already playing AAU or other high school league, and uh, there is a, uh, I think there is a kids that have an opportunity uh, to play for some of the Division One teams. I'm not really sure, um, but uh, you know, in uh, the college sports. Is not very well developed in China as compared to here. Uh, as, as I just mentioned, the, the sports bureau is almost like independent uh, sports. Uh, I mean, uh, government parts, departments to run all the sports, uh, uh, all the sports developing um, with all the young age. Actually, I was one of their project. <laughs> so, um, um, but uh, until today, that people are still realize, start realize that. Uh, sports is kind of a physical education. I have to be put, give back to the school that uh, to complete those entire uh, education uh, program. Like I said, and a lot of things you can directly learn from book, but but in the game you can you can game a lot of friends and and a lot of other things. So the uh, um, the the college sports is is growing, and uh, it's growing pretty fast in the last ten years. Um, but still, uh, there's many years to go. We we just uh, look at NCAA, you know, including basketball, volleyball, and other other sports. There, none of the school had I don't know how many years uh, uh, Blue Devils uh, existed. Maybe 50, 60, yeah, 60 years. Yeah. 60 years. Uh, that was a very very rich of a culture and history uh, there. And uh, 
that, that culture can track a lot of the young kids going to join, the, continue to join this team to, to play. But we don't, not, we don't have that yet. We don't have that yet. It takes time to learn. If you just, if we want to find some kids, you know, can play in the in high school or NCAA level, I, I would say, yes, there are few, there are few, but um, we hope they are not only a, a player. Uh, we hope they are also a, a good person, well, a well-educated person, as well. It's not just a, a guy come out and just play basketball. Do we have uh, any other? We have time for one more question. Uh, yeah, I remember when you first started with the Rockets. Uh, it seemed that Jeff Van Gundy tried to make you into uh, Patrick Ewing. Tried to make you, you know, bang down low. But you had a great shot, and you had many. You know, you. Uh, it seemed like you tried to change your game. Uh, did you find that frustrating, or how did you uh, change your game to adapt to the NBA? Um, Jeff is. I would say he. Jeff is. Uh, I, I would say I won't be today. Uh, if Jeff will never be my coach, he uh, yeah he brought Patrick uh, to Houston try to teach me all the experience he had. He succeeded in the in the past, and uh, I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from him. And uh, into a day that uh, Jeff realized that I have my way need to go alone. Uh, so um, uh, you know, but you, you maybe you didn't see a play looks like Patrick. But uh, you, you, um, but I understand uh, my from my vision that a lot of experience, a lot of experience is is took from him. So uh, it's, everyone is unique. When there's very uh, very common that when a young athlete come out, you will say, okay, this is the next Michael Jordan, this is the next Kevin Garnett or whoever. But uh, there's we all come become ourselves instead of a copy of somebody, because. Uh, everybody have an individual, their individual role to to walk on. Um, but when you, when, by the way you pass, it, you always pick up those experience. You, uh, the people who teach you, or who play with you, who are play against you. So it's almost like a combo. It's almost a combo at the end of the day. You know what I would say? I would say that I would disagree with him on one thing. Everybody is not unique. Actually, I, I meet a lot of people who I think are the same, and he's unique. Because not only, not only does he have the talent, but it, it's rare that you meet somebody that has the character of him. And uh, from somebody who's been through a lot, thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.